Hello and welcome to Mastery Number at Key Stage 2. My name is Debbie Morgan and I'm Director of a Primary at the NCETM. In this presentation, we'll look at the rationale behind Mastery Number at Key Stage 2. Why are we doing it? Uh, we'll reflect on the systems um, to support its implementation and its success in your school. Um, so you're comfortable with the resources and aware of what's being provided and to consider some of the teaching strategies um, and pedagogies that we will use throughout the program. But first of all, thank you for engaging in the program. Um, you've been hand selected, I might say. Um, many schools um, were not successful um, in achieving a place. Um, and one of the key reasons for you achieving a place was that you engaged in mastery number um, at, at key stage one and did so with commitment and fidelity um, to the program. So this project, why do we need it? Um, well, we know that multi knowledge of multiplication um, and division is absolutely central to being successful in mathematics as we progress through key stage two and indeed into key stage three. And understanding that mathematics is really important, but also developing automaticity in times tables in order to relieve cognitive load is also important. Just want you to reflect for a minute on what are you already doing in years four and five um, in order to support uh, pupils? Um, and what are you hoping that Mastering Number will help you? What are some of the challenges that you're facing? And how do you think Mastering Number will help you? Something to um, reflect on, I think, particularly as you're going through the programme this year. So as I said, you're all here because you um, were successful. Um, with Mastery Number um, at Key Stage 1, um, and I presume you're continuing with that programme with your younger children. There's one exception to that, and that is a very special welcome to junior schools. Um, I know many junior schools were frustrated that they couldn't engage in Mastery Number at reception in Key Stage 1, but obviously we wanted to include you in this programme, so we have selected some junior schools um, also to take part. But in Mastery Number at Key Stage 1 and reception, um, that teachers reported that they found it really helpful in terms of developing their own um, subject knowledge, which led to more effective teaching. Um, the opportunities to collaborate um, and support each other um, was a, um, a you know, good form of professional development. Um, and particularly, you, there were things in common that you could all talk about because you were using the same um, lesson um, or session materials. And also the um, the improvement in children's factual fluency, but also their their depth of understanding um, of additive relationships, which was the focus of mastery number at key stage one. And so, what are we aiming for in this project? Um, well, we're aiming for um, schools to have the opportunity for teachers to develop. It's a real opportunity to engage in the programme, not just so that you know how to deliver it, but also for your own professional development. You know, subject leaders here, just it's really important for you to reflect on the opportunities um, to improve the quality of teaching of the staff um, in your school. Um, we know that the quality of teaching is, is, is one of the key factors in terms of um, pupils, pupils' success um, in the subject. Um, and we are aiming also for pupils um, to, to make really good progress in this challenging area of, of multiplication um, and also related division, um, and particularly in years um, four and five. We reflected on the um, importance of automaticity and our long-term memory um, when we looked at uh, mastery number reception in key stage one, and we continue to do so. The same rationale applies that if we can, if we can um, um, en enable the development of automaticity in multiplication facts, um, then that will be that will support children um, in really um, in their understanding. Also, that the link between the two things is really important. And the programme, as I said, will focus on both developing deep, deep knowledge of mathematical structures um, and also um, on that automaticity. And when we commit facts to long term memory, 
they will actually become part of our thinking apparatus. So there's not a separation between knowledge of facts and, and understanding of concepts. The so two very much go together um, hand in hand. So how well do you know your multiplication facts? Um, I'm not I'm not going to take in your homework, but let's just think and, and maybe in, in particular um, think about how you, some of the pupils in your year four um, or even year five um, might reflect to that to these. So here we go. Um, there's no need to tell me, but just say it in your head. Here we go. So, um, you know, can you think of pupils in your school who might or oh, maybe just go into a bit of a panic at this stage, maybe want to disengage because they can't do it? And we don't want pupils to be in that in that position. Um, we want them to feel confident and enjoy um, mathematics. And, and that includes learning their multiplication tables and developing it. We've looked at lots of research as to what is effective in learning multiplication tables, and we are going to apply that um, within the program. Um, and, and here's just one piece of research that says there are three stages in learning a mathematical fact. Um, the procedural knowledge of figuring out the facts, first of all, of having a method of being able to work out a fact, then strategies for remembering those facts based on relationships. Um, we very much did focus on that um, at reception in key stage one and from that develops the automaticity um, in those facts. So the development of, of, of automaticity, of course, is essential so that people can access high order thinking um, in mathematics. So that's the approach that we're going to be taking. So, for example, if we know that seven eighths are 56, then we also know 56 divided by eight is equal to seven. It, that relationship is drawn from that really secure fact um, that we already know. We also know that 56 over eight is equal to seven. And also another improper fraction that 56 over seven is equal to eight because we know seven eighths of 56. We can answer a word problem such as uh, 56 spectators at a netball match um, there are eight times as many spectators as there are players in a netball team. We also know the unit fraction, eight over 56 is equal to one seventh. And similarly, seven over 56 is equal to one eighth. Without knowing that fact, it's very difficult to see these relationships and grasp these um, relationships um, across, as we've seen division, um, a word problem, and indeed um, fractions. But if we know them, then actually that triggers that relationship. Of course, um, eight over 56 is one seventh because seven eighths of 56 um, there. So the importance of the automaticity in those original facts leads to much more um, in mathematics. So let's just think about the structure of the program. Those of you who are familiar with Mastery Number, Key Stage 1 and Reception um, will, will be familiar with the structure um, because there will be lead teachers uh, nominated and they will have access uh, to the materials on our platform called Axis. Um, and they will be expected to share them with other teachers in their year group and indeed work collaboratively together, um, planning um, the sessions and reflecting and feeding back um, to each other. There will be live professional development um, sessions um, and all year four and year five teachers are welcome to come to those. Um, obviously, um, you may not be able to release or if you're a large school, all your year four or your, your year five te teachers at any one time. Um, and so it's optional, but at least one teacher should be attending and for them to feed back, back that professional development to other teachers um, in their school. And so thinking about your, your school, what systems do you have in place so that lead teachers can support their colleagues? Have you thought that through and how that will work in practice? It's a really valuable form of professional development to be able to share and support 
um, each other in this way. Um, a local community, as with Mastery Number Key Stage 1 and Reception, um, will be um, um, set up. And, and that's really important. It's really important that you engage in that local community. Um, that's where you have access um, to your work, local work group leaders um, within your Mass Hub. And you'll have opportunities to reflect with others um, on their on practice and progress um, that pupils are making and many more. The, the work group leads are, will be very experienced and will in, add another layer of professional development um, to teachers in your schools. There'll be the prepared materials as normal, PowerPoint slides alongside teacher, teacher guidance. And the teacher guidance will provide um, subject knowledge and also uh, session notes. Um, and here's an example. If you've done Mastery Number Key Stage 1 and Reception, which all of you should have done, um, apart from the junior schools, as I mentioned before, then I would really encourage you to look at this subject knowledge. As I said before, the quality of teaching um, is, is, is very much um, reflected on the level of subject knowledge that that teacher teacher has. So if you want to improve the quality of teaching and improve the outcomes for your pupils, then this is a really key way of doing it. We have borne in mind teacher workload and try to keep the guidance um, to a minimum, but have enough in there that makes it really worthwhile um, reading it. Um, with a section on making connections, what your pupils should have experienced um, previously in order to be successful. Um, in going forward. And there's always a section on, you know, it's inevitable that you might have one or two pupils who are not quite keeping up with the others who need a bit more additional support. Um, and here's some suggestions um, of for working with them. As with Mastery Number, Key Stage 1 and Reception, um, each day will be mapped out for you um, in a simple form, um, including um, STEM sentences and questions you might ask. I will emphasise that this is not a script. It's been written in a user-friendly way, but the intention isn't that you read um, from it as you teach. You take ownership um, of it and, um, and teach, teach the session as you would anything else um, that you teach in your class. So to support um, the um, five sessions that you teach each week um, for 10 to 15 minutes, um, there are some um, resources um, that will be helpful. There are some optional tasks that can be printed out, but they are optional and we're, we are mindful um, of printing and the expense of that. And so you do not have um, to print them. Um, there are also um, some resources which you already have in your classroom, I anticipate, um, such as mini whiteboards and pens and counters. Um, so we're not asking for anything outside um, the ordinary. The only thing we are asking for outside the ordinary um, are cards, which will become multiplication flash practice cards. Um, and um, you will need... Um, they come in packs of about a thousand and you will need probably a couple of packs um, so that each child can have one card per multiplication um, table with a few left over. Um, and so um, these are easily sourced. Um, just do a search for small flashcards um, on the Internet. Um, they'll come up at about that size and um, just enough to be able to write two expressions on one side, two multiplication expressions and, and one um, product one number um, on the on the other side. To store them in, we are suggesting some um, little bags, and those little bags um, are um, a gold one if possible. It doesn't have to be gold, but there is a part of the program that's called going for gold, so it will be nice, but not essential. And then a second bag per child, um, so that they can um, store their going for gold cards in one bag and then their, their, their spare cards that they're not using at the present time in, um, in another bag. Um, both of these things are, are, are relatively cheap. Um, the um, uh, flashcards come up, you get about a thousand for, for, for less than 10 pound. And, and the little bags, um, you, get, you get many of those um, in, and, and they, they work out per class just to, less than five pound, you know, just a couple of quid um, um, for those. Um, of course, if you if you really are strapped for cash, 
um, then you can ask children to bring in some um, cardboard from a cardboard box that they've got home, such as a, a home, such as a cereal packet, and they can cut those up um, and make themselves. So we've kept costs um, to um, a minimum. There will be um, some times table uh, booklets in which children um, record um, um, quizzes um, in um, that we will ask you to um, um, publish and to um, to um, print, I should say, um, on your within your school. Um, it although, although even that isn't essential, we will also provide slides. Um, with those facts on. So actually children could just write them in their maths books um, if you didn't want to do um, a lot of printing. We are now going to watch a video um, of a teacher who's been working with us um, to help us develop and trial some materials for the programme. Let's see what she has to say. So I wrote one times 50 on this side because there's one group of 50 and I wrote 50 times 1 on this side because there's 50 one time or 50 once and on this side I wrote 2 times 50 because there's two groups of 50 so this year, Mastery Number at Key Stage 2, the focus has really been on engaging all children with being able to not just learn their multiplication table facts, although that's a large part of it, but also really understanding structures of multiplication and setting those foundations for learning that we know is going to be taking place beyond Year 4 and into Year 5, 6 and beyond, and making sure that the children are making connections so that those real foundational um, understandings about structure are really secure for all. Today we've been thinking about not just one unit that represents many, we've been thinking about more than one unit. So we've started with unitising, so it's a really core feature of multiplication where you're thinking about many as one unit. Are we ready? 60, 60, 60. Our factor three representing those three units of 60. Sometimes when we're going into writing multiplication expressions or then going on to equations, the children can write these expressions and equations and not really understand what it is that's going on. So the focus has really been on helping children to understand exactly what it means by a unit and thinking about drawing on their understanding of their year two experience when they've thought about money. Okay, get your stamper ready. What's going to be on our stamper this time? 50. And how many times do we need to stamp? Twice. Why do we need to stamp twice? Uh, um, sure, please. We need to stamp twice because there are two 50 pence. We need to stamp twice because there are two units of 50. There are two 50s. Ready? Here we go. 50. 50. 50. So prior to this year, We've had some success with children learning their multiplication table facts and some children appear to be very confident and other children not so much and I think they felt quite overwhelmed with it and haven't been able to feel as though they'll ever get to that place where they have that recall and it makes so much other areas of maths um, exhausting when you're having to really think so hard about trying to recall a multiplication table fact and we know that that then as they move beyond year four and into year five, six, and into key stage three, those facts are so important. It makes that overload um, really tricky so that they then can't catch up. And I think, um, so we've had success with some children, but not all. And it was really important, I think, to move away from that and to think about all children. It's helped me a lot with my maths lessons because if I had a, qu um, a times table that I didn't know, I would usually have to ask for help, but now I can just do it by myself in my head. It helped me a lot because before I didn't know my nine time table or my seven time table, but now I know them very good. Five times nine would be 45, and 50 would be five more than that. Because five and, um, they're enjoying their multiplication and you can see their confidence and, and I say this is across the class and for some children who have thought themselves that they're not going to do this, not going to be able to achieve this, it's just a joy to see them being able to access all of this part of learning. The goal for gold improved my multiplication, doing better and my dad is impressed. 
One of the things Katie talked about was a concept of unitizing, a really key concept in being successful um, in, in multiplication. Um, unitizing is about understanding many things as one thing, one unit. And in multiplication, there are always at least two factors. And um, where there's a pair of factors, one of those factors indicates the size of the unit and the other factor indicates the number of units. And these unitized counters really give children access uh, to that concept and more deeply understanding the factors. This is very strong in the research literature. And in this article, they see unitizing as the, as the conceptual spring to be able to think and reason multiplicatively. So a really important structure that the programme will develop. And alongside our unitized counters, we're going to be using a gesturing, a stamping gesture um, that you just saw in the video, um, where we will stamp out our units, where we will decide um, what the size of our unit is. One of the key things about multiplication is that all the units are the same size, and then we will stamp out how many we need. So we need three um, for these three 50 pence coins. And here we go. We have 150, one unit of 50, two units of 50 and three units of 50. So that will become common practice in your classrooms. Three times 50. Here's a, a very recent SATS question, this year's um, SATS papers. And I just want to illustrate how understanding the structure um, of multiplication in terms of units um, can really help um, our understanding and our, our access um, to solving problems. So here's a, here's a question from the SATS test. And we have 754 multiplied by 6. So we've got 6 754s. Here they are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're adding to that 3 754s. So here they are. 1, 2, 3. And what the question is asking us is how many times um, 754 was multiplied. And we use our, our understanding of the distributive law here, exemplified um, in the unitized counters, and it becomes a very easy question. There are nine units of 754. And in multiplication, the two, um, um, the two numbers in a multiplication are the factors, um, and one represents the size of a, of a unit and the other represents um, the number of units. Looking at another question, again, from this year's SATS paper. Jack says he multiplied a whole number by three and his answer is 32. And the child is asked, explain why Jack is not correct. Well, if we think of this in terms of unitized counters, we can think of it as being three unitized counters. One, two, three. What we don't know, of course, what the value is um, of those counters. So we can estimate and think, well, what if they were 10 um, each, the value of 10? Well, of course, that's not going to work because three tens are 30. And he says his answer is 32. So our next logical step is, what about if the value of those three unitized counters was 11? So if you put 11 on each of those, we'll get 33. That's too many. So therefore, Jack cannot be correct. So it's supporting that level of reasoning and seeing really clearly um, the structure of the mathematics and in fact making it a very simple question for a child to answer. We're just going to consider some things for you to reflect on um, as you commence the programme. Firstly, um, which mastery number materials should you use, um, particularly in year five? Um, in year four, you'll use the year four materials, but there is an option to also use the year four materials um, in year five, um, as children haven't done the year four programme. And that's a decision um, for you to make. One of the um, things that will help you make that decision was how well your year five children, when they were year four, um, last year did in the um, multiplication um, check and and how 
how are they now because they've had had several weeks since that multiplication check how secure are they in their multiplication um, uh, tables that's one thing to consider um, and the other thing to consider um, is is how deeply do they understand um, multiplication and the structures um, of multiplication um, just a just to um, remind you, particularly those of you've done who mastery number at Key Stage 1 and Reception, um, one of the reflections that many teachers had was this program is going too slowly. This seems too simple. I, I hope you've learned from that, that actually that's deliberate. It's deliberate to include all children and to give everybody time. So I think even though pupils might already know their tables, particularly year five, we are alongside learning tables going really deeply with mathematical structures and becoming better problem solvers um, as a result. So it is relevant um, for all children. So I wouldn't suggest that you just, if you're gonna cho choose the year four program in year five, do it with the whole class, make it a community thing that everybody um, learns um, together. So that's one of the things you might start with the year five materials and think they're struggling a bit. Let's go back to the year four and really put in that grounding. And then they've always got the opportunity to do your year five program um, in year six. And I think that's well worth doing and well worth you um, considering in order to give the best opportunities um, to your pupils. I just want to refer to a really key um, bit of research um, carried out um, by, by King's College. It was called the ICAMS project. But here's just a little bit of data. And I'm wondering what you think. So you've got some a set of calculations there. Um, and the activity was to write a story that reflected. It wasn't about doing the calculation. It was just to write a story that reflected um, each of these expressions here. I wonder how successful you think um, children were. For example, how successful do you think they were um, for subtraction? Well, pretty successful in year six. 86% could write a, a subtract, subtraction story that matched that um, expression. In terms of nine divided by three, a division, um, 65 could. Well, not, not quite so good, but not dire. Um, in terms of 84 divided by 28, well, that was 44%, so a little under half. And I'm wondering what you think the, the percentage might be for 9 times 3. Um, bear in mind that 9 divided by 3, there, it was 65%. So are we thinking at least 65%, maybe even a bit higher, because children find multiplication easier than they do um, division. Well, it might surprise you that it was 37%. Um, and what about the last one, 84 multiplied by 28? Again, it wasn't about calculation, just can they write the story that reflects the structure, the mathematical structure of this um, expression? And the answer was 18%. So children were struggling, and if they're struggling at writing a story, then they're going to struggle and prob with problem solving when it involves multiplication in particular and also, of course, um, related division. So we thought really hard about how children really develop deep understanding of those mathematical structures. One of the ways, but not the only way, is through the use of unitized counters and recognizing that the two factors in an equation, one represents the size of a unit and the other represents um, the number of those units. So here's just an example um, with children um, in year four um, being asked to think of a story to match each set of unitized counters and write the matching um, expressions. And they were very successful um, at doing that. In fact, you would have access to a video um, that you can see because in, in year four, for year four, for the year four materials, we have um, pre-recorded the actual lessons that you will be um, developing um, and using in your classroom. And you will see Katie, the teacher in the interview, um, uh, leading those sessions. So that will give you a really good start um, to the programme at being able um, to observe um, those children. 
Last thing, how we assess um, the impact. It's really important. The, the DFE are putting you know, a lot of um, investment um, into this programme, hence you're not being charged for it. Um, and the professional development um, is um, provided and all the materials um, are provided for you. So assessing impact is, is important. Um, and one of the things I will say is that we're going to provide some assessments for you. Um, and you should do these. It's essential that you do these before you start to use the materials. They're not onerous. Um, and I'll explain on the next slide um, exactly um, what they are. But there'll be a teacher survey um, with just four questions. That's all. And there'll be um, a pupil assessment, um, one with all of your class uh, who will just complete 10 retrieval um, questions um, in a timed PowerPoint very similar to the modification check. Um, and then you'll just select only two pupils um, from, from, from your class, um, one who's um, a free school meal and one who's not um, a free school meal. Um, and again, there will be um, some, some questions for them to answer. Um, as I say, it will only be two children um, in your class and then for you to um, um, upload that data onto an, uh, an electronic form. And there will be guidance, um, the questions and guidance on, use, on using the questions will be found on AXIS. Um, if you're um, familiar with Key Stage 1 and Reception um, Mastery Number, then you'll be very familiar um, with AXIS. We're using the same platform. Um, if you're a junior school, then, you know, do get support from your Mass Hub, but it, it, is, it is easy to use and there is um, support um, for you. Um, and the same questions will be asked at the beginning and end of the program, and there'll be opportunities to discuss and share with each other and talk to your um, work group leads um, as well. So um, just to end, really, I'm really excited um, to be working with you um, um, across this year and finding out um, how you're getting on. Um, and the aim of the program is really in this very difficult and challenging area of mathematics, which is why it's been chosen. And we can see from the ICAMS that children are generally not successful for being able to reason mathematically. The programme is all about providing access and success for all children in year four and five, but also to impact on their progress to the end of primary and beyond into secondary. Thank you for listening. And as I say, really looking forward, um, as, a, as are your Mass Hubs, to working um, with you. Thank you for your time and commitment and the difference you are making to children in your school. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye.